mountain gives us fresh air to inhale. It gives us water every day and fulfills life every way. How beautiful surroundings that we have is a gift from up above. May you be thankful of what you have and share the blessings from loving God. Today is a great day. It is a love-fulfilling way. It's because I have to say that God is my guidance all the way. Open drainage systems human beings do not realize. Struggling and surviving human prefers. One day, nature will surely suffer. Factories and industries releases harmful gases. Unaware humans, be, human beings still careless. What will happen to the world? This is my concern for tomorrow's world. Increasing automobiles on the rise release dangerous carbon monoxide. Contributing pollution in day-to-day -day life, spoiling the nature, destabilizing life. Let's rise to the occasion and minimize the pollution, save the nature, and avoid congestion. If nature continues to suffer, generations next shall curse their mentors. Let's pledge not to play with nature more, plant more trees, save pollution, and be ashore. Nature will pay back all the dividends, giving generation next a healthy and safe land. Unwarranted and uncontrolled civilization and exponential population explosion. Open drainage and ever-growing pollution, human beings all creating congestion. Nature is bound to suffer. Nobody really bothers. Man-made factories and industries releases harmful gases added by vehicular carbon monoxide. Is human being really bothering? Leading to abnormal suicide. Friends get cautioned, awake and arise. Stop playing with nature, guys. If nature starts playing with us, unwarranted and untimely deaths will rise. My caution, let not the nature suffer, care and bother for the nature to prefer. Save trees and let the environment be user-friendly. Generation next will thank us surely. Beaten pieces of grass. Did you think this would last? Beaten pieces of grass. Covered from winter, it was a bitter task. Naked trees without a shield, unsteady hands can you finally feel. Like you can take the wheel, naked trees without a shield. You can make me feel like I can take the wheel. Words chilled the morning air. You're stunning. You're moving. I feel like you could care. World, words chilled in the morning air. You give me the feeling, take me there. Dizzy planets spinning worlds away. We are all decomposing someday. Dizzy planets spinning worlds away. You make me believe endlessly. The clearest droplets falling delicately between sturdy branches during the strongest storm. Take me home. The clearest droplets falling delicately rolling off your lips. Sunrise, sunset. The colors remain the same. Unlike the ever-changing seasons, change is the only thing to blame. Earth Song by Ralph Waldo Emerson Mine and yours, mine, not yours. Earth and doors, stars abide, shine down in the old sea. Old are the shores, but where are old men? I, who have seen much, such have I never seen. The lawyer's deed ran sure, in tale to them, and to their heirs who shall succeed without fail forevermore. Here is the land, shaggy with wood, with its old valley mound and flood. But the heritors fled like the flood's foam, the lawyer and the laws and the kingdom, Clean swept here from. They called me theirs who so controlled me, yet every one wished to stay and is gone. How am I theirs if they cannot hold me, but I hold them? When I heard this earth strong, I was no longer brave, my hours cold, like bust in the chill of the grave. Nature 
by Ralph Waldo Emerson. A subtle chain of countless rings, the next unto the farthest springs, the eye reads omens where it goes, and speaks all languages the rose, and striving to be man, the worm, mounts through all the spires of form. The rounded world is fair to see, nine times folded in mystery, though baffled seers cannot impart the secret of its laboring heart. Throb thine with nature's throbbing breast, and all is clear from east to west. Spirit that lurks each form within, beckons to spirit of its kin. Self-kindled every atom glows and hints the future which it owes. My Garden by Ralph Waldo Emerson If I could put my woods in song and tell what's there in joy, all men would to my garden throng and leave the city's void. In my plot no tulips flow, no living pines and oaks and scent, and rank the savage maples grow, from spring's faint flush to autumn red. My garden is a forest ledge, which older forests bound. The banks slope down the blue lake edge, then plunge to depths profound. Here once the deluge ploughed, Laid the terraces one by one, ebbing later, whence it flowed, they bleach and dry in the sun. The sowers made haste to depart, the wind and the birds which sowed it, not for fame nor by rules of art, planted these and tempests flowed it. Water that washed my garden side played not in nature's lawful web, they heed not moon or solar tide, five years elapsed from flood to ebb. Hither hasted in old time drove, and every god none did refuse, and be sure at last came love, and after love the muse. Keen ears can catch a syllable as if one spake to another, if the hemlocks tall untamable, and what the whispering grasses smother. Aeolian harps in the pine ring with the song of the fates, infant Bacchus in the vine. Far distant, yet his chorus waits. Canst thou copy in verse one chime of the woodbell's peal and cry? Write in a book the morning's prime, or match with words that tender sky. Wonderful verse of the gods, of one import of very tone, they chant their bliss of their abodes to man imprisoned in his own. Ever the words of the gods resound, but the porches of man's ear. Seldom in this low life's round are unsealed that he may hear wandering voices in the air and murmurs in the world. Speak what I cannot declare, yet cannot withhold. When the shadow fell on the lake, the whirlwind and ripples wrote, ere bells of fortune that shine and break, and omens above thought. But the meanings cleave to the lake cannot be carried in book or urn. Go thy ways now, come later back on waves and hedges. Still they burn. These are the fates of men forecast of better men than live today. If who can read them comes at last, he will spell and sculpture. Stay. Nature by Ralph Waldo Emerson Winter snow, easily to shed the snow, and the untaught spring is wise in cowslips and anemones. Nature, hating art and pains, balks and baffles, plotting brains, casualty and surprise are the apples of her eyes, but she dearly loves the poor, and by marvel of her own, strikes the loud pretender down. For nature listens in the rose and hearkens in the berry's bell, to help her friends to plague her foes, and likewise God she judges well. Yet doth much her love excel to the souls that never fell, to swains that live in happiness and do well because they please, who walk in ways that are unfamed and feats achieved before they're named. Nature by Ralph Waldo Emerson She is gamesome and good, but of mutable mood. No dreary repeat her now and again. She will be all things to all men. She who is old but no wise feeble pours her power into the people, merry and manifold without bar, 
makes and moulds them what they are and what they call their city way is not their way but hers and what they say they made to-day they learnt of the oaks and firs she swoweth men as mallows fresh hero and maiden flesh of her flesh she drugs her water and her wheat with the flavours she finds meat and gives them what to drink and eat and having thus their bread and growth they do her bidding nothing loath what's most theirs is not their own but borrowed in atoms from iron and stone and in their vaunted works of art the master stroke is still her part two rivers by ralph waldo emerson thy summer voice must get a quit repeats the music of the rain but sweeter rivers pulsing flit through thee as thou through concord plain thou in thy narrow banks art pent the stream i love and bounded goes through flood and sea and firmament through light through life it forward flows i see the inundation sweet i hear the spending of the stream through years through men through nature fleet through love and thought through power and dream must de goblin strong of shard and flint makes jewels gay they lose their grief who hears his song and where he winds is the day of day so forth and brighter fares my stream who drink it shall not thirst again no darkness stains its equal gleam and ages drop in it like rain the sunset woven of soft lights by catherine lee bates the sunset woven of soft lights and tender colors lingers late as looking back on all day's dreary plights compassionate the foolish day of hope so high who counts her hours by blunders now yet wears at last this jewel crown of sky upon her brow out of eternity she goes not for her failure scorned but see our poor day flushed with beauty one more rose on god's rose tree out of the sunset's red by william stanley braithwaite out of the sunset's red into the blushing sea the winds of day drop dead and dreams come home to me the sea is still and apart is a stillness in my heart the night comes up the beach the dark steals over all though silence has no speech i hear the sea dreams call to my heart and in reply it answers with a sigh a walk at sunset by william cullen bryant when insect wings are glistening in the beam of the low sun and mountain tops are bright oh let me by the crystal valley stream wander amid the mild and mellow light and while the red-breast pipes his evening way give me one lonely hour to him the setting day o sun that o'er the western mountains now goest down in glory ever beautiful and blessed is thy radiance whether thou colorest the eastern heaven in night mist cool till the bright day star vanish or on high climbest and streamest thy white splendors from mid sky yet loveliest are thy setting smiles and fair fairest of all that earth beholds the hues that live among the clouds and flush the air lingering and deepening at the hour of dews then softest gales are breathed and softest heard the plaining voice of streams the pensive note of bird they who here roamed of yore the forest wide felt by such charm their simple bosoms won they deemed their quivered warrior when he died went to bright isles beneath the setting sun where winds are high at peace and skies are fair and purple skirted clouds curtain the crimson air so with the glories of the dying day its thousand trembling lights and changing hues the memory of the brave who passed away tenderly mingled fitting hour to muse on such grave theme and sweet the dream that shed brightness and beauty round 
the destiny of the dead. For ages on this island forest here thy beams did fall before the red man came to dwell beneath them. In their shade the deer fed, and feared not the arrow's deadly aim. Nor tree was felled in all that world of woods, save by the beaver's tooth or winds or brush of floods. Then came the hunter tribes, and thou didst look for ages on their deeds in the hard chase, and well-fought wars, green sod, and silver brook took the first taint of blood before thy face. The warrior generations came and passed, and glory was laid up for many an age to last. Now they are gone, gone as thy setting blaze goes down the west while night is pressing on, and with them the old tale of better days and trophies of remembered power are gone. Yon field that gives the harvest, where the plough strikes the white bone, is all that tells their story now. I stand upon their ashes and thy beam, the offspring of another race, I stand beside a stream they love, this valley stream, and where the night fire of the quarried band showed the gray oak by fits and war song rung, I teach the quiet shades of strains of this new tongue. Farewell, but thou shalt come again, thy light must shine on other changes, and behold the place of the thronged city still as night. States fallen, new empires built upon the old, but never shalt thou see these realms again darkened by boundless groves and roamed by savage men. A Day by Emily Dickinson I'll tell you how the sun rose, a ribbon at a time. The steeple swam an amethyst, and news like squirrels ran. The hills untied their bonnets, the bobolinks begun. Then I said softly to myself, that must have been the sun. But how he sat I know not, there seemed a purple style, which little yell boys and girls were climbing all the while, till when they reached the other side a dominion grey put gently up the evening bars and led the flock away. Now the sun is sinking in the golden west, birds and bees and children all have gone to rest. And the merry streamlet, as it runs along with a voice of sweetness, sings its evening song. Cowslip, daisy, violet in their little beds, all among the grasses, hide their heavy heads. There they'll all, sweet darlings, lie in the happy dreams, till the rosy morning wakes them with its beams. Sunset by Emily Dickinson a sloop of amber slips away upon an ether sea, and wrecks in peace a purple tar, the sun of ecstasy. Oh, to sustainability! Oh, sustainability! How I treasure thee! Ah, the generosity packaged within one word, nay, one eternal word, of only six syllables, describing history, and future alone. Thy form is the most thoughtful, thy presence is the most extensive, thy thoughts are kind and beautiful, prime and sweet. Thy land is the nursery of nature, and when thou shalt prance upon my tongue, pure freshness shall thee fabricate. Thy life is one of a writer, rewriting the book of future each day and that of an artist creating a better scene while making a canvas of the land. Thy generosity saves the poor and those plagued by hunger, while it is simply thou which saves me. O oh, sustainability, how I treasure thee! Lovely, lively, life-providing mother of many fish world over, providing life to fish sustainable and unsustainable alike, Soothing sounds of plentiful waves, crushing, bountiful farm of resources, ever giving, ocean. What do I have now? Nothing. My life is breaking from bearing the burden of this job. Every day I bear gifts, each day I am stabbed in return. The creatures who roam through the hills comb my dark hair with painful vigor to make it more fruitful. 
They want more, 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 and their greed chokes me. They expose me to smoke as black as coal, willing me to die, to become as barren and lifeless as my sisters. In return for this cruelty, I fill their plates with mounds of food and splash my way into their cups. I weave memories with the beating of my heart, and even my most sorrowful times are full of fun. Some days. The best days, the sun smiles from behind the clouds, filling the air with a rich warmth. I watch in utter silence as young children chase one another about the fields, laughing as they leap. The sun shines above the fields, sharing its golden glory with all wandering within its reach, even the cruel men who clog my senses with smoke. How selfless! Brightly colored flowers reach out to him with juicy gifts in their arms. Roses scatter the ground, shoping off their splendor with an alluring scent and lustrous red petals dear to the skin. Bees leap between flowers like gymnasts with a buzz on their lips, feasting on the nourishing nectar their benefactors generously provide. Birds of all colors join the chorus from above the trees as their mates nurse hatchlings in nests, resting on branches like budding flowers. The sun descends through the hills, doing more charity to the eye than the soul. The supreme artist, he paints the sky with hues of red, yellow, and purple. As the sky fades to a rich black, the moon shies away as she adorns the sky with specks. Of light. Despite the thoughtless actions of humans, this miracle in the heavens makes my job worth its suffering. As the glorified sun bathes the sky in gold, once more in order to honor the moon, I hear a new thought rise among the people. They have almost used all I have to give. I was once as rich as money itself, but now I am barely a penny. All day I hear talk about moving to Mars. Tearfully and shocked, I listen. After all I've done for them, they abandon me. After all this, they leave me in a lonely corner of space as the forgotten one. As tears glide off my eyelashes, I await the arrival of children who have succeeded in their request to play in the drenched outdoors. But none arrive. Everyone is too engrossed in the new forms of entertainment they have received. Something new to creation. Technology. What has become of the people in this world? My heart is breaking from bearing the burden of this loneliness. The Juggler of Day by Emily Dickinson Blazing in gold and quenching in purple, leaping like leopards to the sky, then at the feet of the old horizon, laying her spotted face to die. Stooping as low as the otter's window, touching the roof and tinting the barn, kissing her bonnet to the meadow, and the juggler of day is gone. The Coming of Night by Emily Dickinson How the old mountains drip with sunset and the break of dawn. How the hemlocks are tipped in tinsel by the wizard sun. How the old steeples hand the scarlet till the ball is full. Have I the lip of the flamingo that I dare to tell. Then how the fire ebbs like billows touching all the grass with a departing sapphire feature as if a duchess pass. How a small dust crawls on the village till the house is blot. And the old flambeau of men no carry, glimmer on the spot. Now it is night and nest and kennel, and where was the wood just a dome of abyss is nodding into solitude. These are the visions baffled Goido, Titlin never told, Domencino dropped the pencil powerless to unfold. 